Bonjour à tous, mon nom est Raphaël Chavardès. Nous allons continuer avec le deuxième bloc, c'est adaptation physiologique. Et on a Jehovah Lorenko Jr. qui va présenter sur Assessing the Wood Architecture of Conifer Species and Cell Level Adjustments Linked to Hydraulic Safety and Efficiency. Thank you very much. Yeah, before I, before I get started, I want to say uh, thanks for the opportunity to present my, my project. Um, research project and that's the title assessing the wood architecture of conifer species and cell level adjustments linked to hydraulic safety and efficiency and it's a pleasure being here to present this research and i, I want to start with a question uh, that's the main question underlying my research is why tree species are different affected by drought and uh, we know this uh, there are uh, many uh, studies out there trying to answer this question. In my research, I propose zooming in and investigating the cell level traits. Then by doing that, we understand that drought affects plants via cell level traits. And here, I'm specifically talking about the vessels, right? Vessels are very important with they transport water from roots up to the leaves. And there's a field of research which is uh, increasing, uh, tremendously increasing in the past decade. And that provide very useful information and uh, help us understand drought resistance in plants, but not, not just that. Growth strategies like fast and slow growth strategies also by this investigation, tree mortality. And we have a contribution for this field already. Uh, we can also understand species distribution based on this uh, cell level traits. So looks like uh, there's a trait selection in the community uh, uh, across environmental radiance. And this is scaling up the approach is something uh, has been very encouraged in the this research field because we need to move forward to, understand, to a study of the conductive system as an integrated role. So not just keeping in the cell level, but trying to relate that to the plant level and so on. And some hypotheses out there that help us understand the species differences regarding uh, hydraulics and drought is the safe efficiency trade-off. That is thought to be important mechanism for plant ecology and evolution, right? So uh, because the, uh, the larger vessels, they conduct more water, they are also more prone to air bubbles in the system, to the cavitation. And if the drought becomes too intense, that's what happens. The, the conduit becomes embolized and the hydraulic system fails. So what this hypothesis proposed that species should trade off or spread out along this, uh, this spectrum here between having larger vessels, so conducting more water and small vessels, right? That conduct less water, but would be more efficient. But it turns out that uh, Gleason 2016 found out this trade-off is weak, didn't find a so high correlation, it was very low, but we have some new pathways out there uh, and there's a agreement around this that there are many cell traits in the wood and in fact if uh, you want to understand we need to uh, deeply investigate and see more traits, just vessels are not enough. Uh, the message here is that hydraulic attack is more than just pipes or tubes, right? And good example of that are the interconduit pits, are those micro valves, right? I'm comparing here angiosperms or plant with flowers and conifers. Conifers are larger. Uh, this figure here, you can see the scale is two eyes, uh, double the size, angiosperms, and is a little bit differentiated as we have some traits there, the torus, just like a plug and the membrane, is, which is permeable. So conifer pits are, uh, has this higher capacity to transport water while controlling the spread of embolism. So how that works, I'm going to explain it to you right now. And the, this valve functioning is that the torus, as I said, the plug, help us to control the embolism because when the vessel becomes embolized, this plug is shifted, blocking the passage of the air, as you can see here in the example, 
allowing the plant bypass the embolized vessel that keep the water flow up to the leaves. So that's a fantastic system, and I I always amazed uh, so how uh, interesting those plants are, and we never know what we're going to find until we investigate deeply investigate right and it turns out that those traits are very important because we know plants can have a little bit different uh, pit valves these hydraulic micro valves and this example here this plant has a small uh, torus that would uh, result in, in in this tiny torus overlap and if this this plant face a dry day or a dry event that what could happen so this micro valve would fail, right? Causing the hydraulic failure, the whole system, which is thought to be a primary cause of predictive loss and plant mortality. So with all that in mind, we started this idea of investigating the hydraulic architecture of conifers. This is the species we are analyzing, jack pine, white spruce, black spruce, and balsam fir. We had some clues regarding their uh, drought tolerance, right? where jack pine uh, should be the more the most drought toler tolerant species here compared so this species were tested in this rain exclusion experiment which started in 2014 in Pohé de Montmorency in Quebec here in Quebec and then that provided a very interesting uh, gradient of soil moisture and they have this clear objective of assessing the changes in hydraulic architecture of trees growing in different soil water conditions and over time. We assess the time component by making measurements within and between the tree rings. And we made some sampling within the tree rings, like from the early wood to the late wood to capture this variation along the growing, the growing season, right? And we had some uh, options to do this investigation. One that I, I was familiar with, because I worked with that in my PhD, it was using the traditional bidimensional methods like optical microscope. It turns out, as you can see here, there's a lot of steps there and it can be a little bit time consuming to do this. So we decided to move uh, forward and use some new techniques. And we did that by using the laser microscope and 3D methods. So maybe you now might be thinking, oh, that's going to be even more time consuming. 3D sounds more complex. But actually, that's, that's not true because using laser microscope, it can skip many steps there. Like no need of thin cuts or stain or even image addition because the laser microscope provides high resolution images and distortion free images as well. And we could speed up the process and that's the result. We could scan over uh, 400 images like that. And not just a scan, but do all the analysis. And we are working on the paper right now. And that cost uh, one semester. That was very good result. And, and this is one of the important parts of my research here uh, at UCAN, uh, providing those images quickly and providing a, a good method to assess in a feasible way. Right, and uh, some interesting stuff here. You can see you can flip the image and and choose the best uh, angle to make the measurements. You can see the torus here in yellowish. Uh, the conduits are those larger cells here. So we did many measurements here. Right, I'm gonna jump now for the results and some of the interesting results we found out that the growth performance is mostly associated with chains in tracheal numbing, right? The purple here, while the effects of soil uh, water are low. So in general, the soil water was low, maybe exception here for basal fur, looks like a species, uh, the soil water ha had a, a more strong in the dependent effect on the growth rate of the species, right? And also some uh, variation, very interesting variability here, like black spruce, a stronger effect of fifth aperture. That would mean this lateral transport of water, vessel to vessel would be important for the species, something worthwhile to investigate further. And the torus, 
important for dolls and fur, or at some point it looks like it's important for the species having a, a more safety uh, trait to keep the functioning of those microvalves, those hydraulic microvalves, right? That would be important for the growth of this species. And talking about growth, uh, when you compare the growth of this species, we saw that by the end of 2019, uh, Jack Pine had an outstanding growth performance and, and uh, it, it ended up uh, as first in this race, let's say, race, right? So that for the species taller than any other in the experiment. And now I want to uh, put a focus on Jack Pine to understand, uh, we did models like that using structural equation modeling to link all those variables, as I said, linking the cellular traits of the whole plant. And it looks like this, the Jack Pine has a high capacity of transport water, which is associated with the growth because the species which, which is capable of uh, widening the conduit, it's important to minimize uh, the increase in the hydraulic resistance as, as the plant grows taller. So with that, more water is provided to the leaves and the photosynthesis or the carbon uh, acquisition and the growth are maximized. The, the species grow tall, taller than any other and thicker diameter providing even more space to so having even uh, larger trachids and pits. So uh, with that, that in mind, uh, we, we propose that Jack Pine should be a strong competitor for water and light. And now analyzing this, uh, uh, the speed rates, here I'm showing turbos and uh, the pit aperture, right? Some things we are analyzed there. And we found out that Jack Pine keeps this well coordinated just amongst the pit traits, keeping the, the turbos overlap or protecting the functioning of this valve, regardless of the time here we're analyzing the growing season. Regardless if in the early wood or late wood, keeps this high turbos overlap. That doesn't happen with balsam fir. This is example, which would be species more prone to the turbos displacement, as we see in the figure. And another thing is that is, uh, there is more space in the pit uh, structure as well. That means that uh, Jack Pine can reduce the resistance to the water flow, right? And important aspect to analyze as well is how those those traits change, how uh, tight is uh, correlated they are. So there's a scope here by Hack. The tight scaling relationship between pit traits optimize hydraulic conductivity. So if you analyze uh, the, the pit correlation between them, we found out that Jack Pine has this high correlation, right? Almost perfect correlation, which means that for a given change, the pit aperture, this information is transmitted like a chain reaction and changing all this uh, hydraulic architecture. So it's very well coordinated. And another important aspect to highlight here is the slope of this uh, curve here, the, this, the regression is two. That means for a given change, the pit aperture tar was double the size. This for Jack Pine, right? So that's why the species can keep uh, this high turbos overlapping uh, throughout time. And uh, if you compare that with balsam fir, the, the history is a bit different, right? The correlation is not that high and the slope variation is not so high as well. That's why the species varies a lot in the terms of a lap and, and could be more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, not so tolerant to drought and embolize the vessels, right? Okay, so a quick uh, conclusion. Jack Pine has evolved this uh, mechanism that adjusts its hydraulic texture to optimize both hydraulic safety and efficiency and resulting in high growth performance. So that is keep a little bit of this, that first hypothesis that I showed you, the safety efficiency trade-off. And uh, looks like Jack Pine can skip that because of the pits, right? The pit structure. And summarizing our findings, uh, the methods in laser microscopy can provide a feasible way to rapidly assess the hydraulic architecture of trees. The growth performance is the outcome of the ability to quickly widen conduits, minimize the hydraulic resistance in a seedling grow taller. And the tight scaling relationship between pit trays optimize hydraulic safety and efficiency in conifers, likely allowing them to skip 
the hydraulic tra uh, trade-off hypothesis, and Jack Pine would be a good example of that. And some folks I have to say thanks, uh, Danny Shaw, Danny Wood, and Louis Duchesne, and the institutional support I received it. Without them, I wouldn't be here presenting this talk to you. Thank you all of them. It was important. Thank you all for watching this presentation, and I'm going to be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. <laughs>